What is going on, guys? Sun's right overhead, so it's probably a little dark. I'm Will. <laughs> You're watching another episode of Cooking with Clams down here in Key West. I am fishing down at the Ingham. That is the uh, uh, decommissioned, I think that's the word, a retired uh, Coast Guard cutter ship, the Ingham. And this is a really interesting spot because they've dredged this out, so it's about 20, 30 feet deep, and it's actually the deepest water in Key West that you can fish from land. Um, I know there's bridges up the Keys, but Key West proper, this is the deepest water. And because of that, a bunch of pelagics actually come through. And right now, behind me, I saw a couple bubble up on the water. I saw a couple of birds diving. Um, it's usually around this time where it's spring and you get like a two, three week period. You're doing work on the angle. Uh, you get a two, three week period where you can actually catch these fish. And what I'm going after is Spanish mackerel. And I'm almost positive they're here. Yeah, I see them, I see them blowing up, but of course it's about 300 yards that way. <laughs> um, but they're in here. Hopefully the wind will push the bait towards me and we'll get a shot at these mackerel. I also have a visitor here. All right, so our first catch, not a mackerel, but a good deep. Pull some trash out of the water here. So all I'm throwing is just uh, little epoxy jigs because it matches all the mohara, the bay fish that are in here. Birds are still diving, but everything is a bit far out. But we're gonna keep casting and maybe we get one uh, stray mackerel that decided to come in. Definitely one of the cooler things in Key West. Also, something you might not know if you come down here, but Fridays and Saturdays they do happy hour up on the deck there for sunset. And it is one of the best sunset spots. And I'll show you why in a second as we get around here. But as you're sitting on the deck, you have an unobstructed view. Because the sun sets right out there. And not a lot of people know that about the Ingham, so not a lot of people go. But now, like I said earlier, this is all dredged out so that these ships can come in here. And this is the deepest water in Key West and the bay fish come in, they get trapped in here and then the pelagics come in and chase them in and just feed on them. But we got to wait for a little bit of commotion and we'll cast in the middle of it and hopefully come up with a mackerel. So now the other hope here, if you can see the flag on that ship there, the wind is blowing this way, so it's blowing the bait fish in. We have an incoming tide. We have the sargasm, which bait fish love hanging around. You know, this is, this is the right recipe. Just a matter of actually converting. And I am also here a little bit early, uh, usually closer to sunset. So we'll wait it out. The other trick is getting them up and over this wall. <laughs> so hooking them and bringing them to the wall is one part. Oh, that was a juicy one. He was big. Oh, all right, keep casting. All right, so I got one on. And now, like I said, I got to get them up and over. Once again, I didn't have the camera on, but there he is, and from here, I can tell he's a keeper. So I am going to put the camera down for a second, reel down to him, and flip him up onto here. So give me one second. Oh, got him. Got him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. 
There we go, we got our Spanish mackerel. Unfortunately, the one earlier was much, much bigger than that. It was much bigger than that, but this one will do. We're gonna put him out of his misery and keep fishing because this means they are here. So truth be told, I was starting to give up and that's why I didn't have the camera on, which now I totally regret. Although, so Spanish mackerel have to be 12 inches to the fork, which this guy is. And that is, it's a pretty small fish. Honestly, I thought I snagged seaweed and he just came right in. The one earlier was much bigger. I wish I got that one, but we are going to keep fishing. I'm gonna fish until sunset, I think. I'm just gonna keep going. Um, and I think what we're gonna make, I've done it before on the channel, I've made banh mi's, which is one of my favorite sandwiches in the world. Um, it's a Vietnamese sandwich, but Spanish mackerel is gonna be so, so perfect for that. So uh, hopefully I get a couple more, at least, at least one more. There's got to be one more and I'll be better about the camera, I swear. So I keep seeing little pods of them. They're circling around, like I said, and they're, they're blowing up on the bait fish. And every once in a while, you'll see the birds dive on them. And it's just, it's just a matter of luck putting the lure in the right place at the right time. But just so we keep things, uh, as you like to say, honest in YouTube land, I've been out here three and a half hours. And had I landed the other one, we would only have, you know, two fish to show for it. Now granted, it's absolutely beautiful out. It is a perfect, perfect day. So I don't mind, but I would like to have a little more fish to show you guys. But that's okay. I can I can make that work and hopefully hopefully we get a couple more before the sun completely goes down. And that's the entire time that I'm casting. I'm looking to see if they're popping up anywhere and even though I can't reach them I could at least cast in that direction in case they're they're swimming around swimming around hunting but it's been a long day, but this spot is only going to get better as the month goes on. And like I said, you got you got about two, three weeks of very good fishing and then it completely dies off. And then the other thing I want to tell you is just what I'm using. It's just the light tackle stuff that uh, Toadfish sent me. And then I have a hoagie jig, a little bit of wire trace, so not much, just enough, but there are big barracudas in here, so I like to put a little more than just a couple of inches, and then I have fluoro to braid, and I'm not even, I'm not even jigging this lure, I'm just letting it sink, and then reeling in really fast, and that usually gets the job done. Usually. <laughs> oh, that's got to be seaweed. Yeah. See, that's what I mean. The seaweed. Ah, that's what I thought I had on before, and that's why I didn't film. That's exactly what it felt like. These are gorgeous, gorgeous fish. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, the Spanish mackerel, hopefully uh, you can see here, but he's got dots, yellow dots. The Ciro mackerel will have a yellow line and then almost like yellow dashes. These guys are a little bit oilier and in my opinion, a way, way better fish. But yeah, they gotta be 12 inches from the fork to there and this guy is exactly 12. All right, you got birds diving and everything is blowing up out that way and there's no way that I could reach that. I, don't, I doubt you can see it on the GoPro. But birds are diving down, you got splashes coming out of the water there. Today they just seem to be far. I, I get lucky sometimes and they're all right here and it's like non-stop action for about 30-40 minutes. I think as the sun goes down, this is just gonna keep getting better and better and better. I hope, I 
hope that that's real. <laughs> So since fishing is a little bit slow, um, I've been taking breaks, waiting to see when the uh, when the boils are happening. Right now it's been quiet for a little bit, but we're coming up on slack tide. So I might take a little bit of a break, um, charge up my batteries, and then come back out. If you don't see any more fishing in this video, that basically tells you how my uh, the rest of my night went, and we'll see you back at the house. Before I go, Another fun fact over here is that the uh, Army Special Forces have a dive school down here and this is actually one of the places that they train and it's pretty cool so you could come over here go to fish and there's all uh, their boats out and they were actually doing jet ski retrieval earlier um, but they have all the guys in the water training and a buddy of mine um, his brother was a sergeant and he was telling me that one of the drills they run is an obstacle course where they have to do it blind. Um, so pretty, pretty intense. Um, but yeah, this is just a really magical spot. It's really great because it stays pretty empty. Um, so don't tell anyone. We'll keep it a secret. No, it's no secret. It's just not really full of fish that people target. There's jack of all here, Spanish mackerel, cereal mackerel, barracuda. There's not a lot of snapper. So the people that want to catch snapper, they're over um, either at Mallory Square or White Street Pier. Um, there's usually only about two or three of us here fishing. So it's a really, really great spot. Um, hopefully I come up with one more. If not, we'll see you in the kitchen. Back in the kitchen, so that should tell you exactly how the uh, the rest of my day went. Um, which is okay, I have that one that's just enough for one banh mi. So we won't be cooking for other people today, just myself. Um, a banh mi is a Vietnamese sandwich. It has pickled daikon radish, carrot, jalapeno, cilantro, mayo, and then it's usually a pork, a chicken. It always has a pate on it. So I picked up some chicken livers. We're gonna make a really simple, simple pate, and I'm gonna pickle some carrots, and I couldn't find daikon down here in Key West, but I did get radish. So we'll chop up some radish, and we're gonna pickle those. I'm gonna get those working tonight. I'm gonna let the fish chill overnight, and then we'll make our sandwiches tomorrow afternoon. So let's get started. So first things first, I'm gonna mandolin the carrots. And then we'll julienne the, the slices. This is what we want, just shredded carrots. So you want them pretty thin. We're making more of a slaw than uh, matchsticks before anyone gets on me for this. These were the only radishes I could find. It's a pretty, pretty sad affair, but we're gonna work with what we got. Now, like I said, normally you'd want uh, daikon, but the same thing. We're gonna slice this super thin, so it's almost like a slaw. Crinkle cut radishes, boy. <laughs> we've, we've reached a new low. So about 50-50 carrots or radish. Okay, and I'm gonna show you the easiest way to measure out your pickling liquid. So in the container that you're gonna leave the pickles in, go halfway with white vinegar and the other half water until they're covered. And that should be the perfect ratio of water and vinegar. Put that into a saucepan. And then we go equal parts, sea salt and sugar. I like to go just a little more, a little more sugar. Now we move this to the stove, bring it up to a boil, and then put it on top of our veg. 
So all you're really doing is making sure that everything is dissolved. All the, uh, the sugar and salt. A lot of people would say do not bring your pickling liquid up to a boil just right before a boil because you don't necessarily want to cook your veg that's another that's another no-no so everything is dissolved You're looking good I gave it a taste it doesn't need anything it's well balanced but definitely give it a taste and see if it needs to be mellowed out a little more sugar a little more salt and just remember that pickling liquid shouldn't be something you would drink. It should be a little bit harsh. All right, there we go. And just pour into. And that is it. This is going into the fridge with the lid on it and that'll be pickles tomorrow. Okay, so now we're gonna make a very, very simple pate. I have one shallot and now this is all going into a blender so it doesn't have to be sliced and diced too too finely. Half an onion. Two cloves of garlic. A little bit of salt. Black pepper. I have here thyme. Now I'm going to bring the heat up and add my chicken liver. I'm gonna deglaze with a little bit of fish sauce. And some white wine. And that gets everything off of the pan. And this is all going to go into the blender in about two minutes. You just want that liquid to cook down just a little bit. A little more pepper. And a little bit of mustard seed. Alright, that liquid is almost completely cooked down. We don't want all of it to be cooked down. And we're going to put this in here and let it cool down because we're going to add butter before we blend it. Okay, this is cooled down, not completely, but cooled down enough. We're going to put in half a stick of Kerrygold. And give that a blend. Now if it needs liquid you could add just a little bit of water. And that is our pate. So we're going to put that in a dish, put it in the fridge overnight. That'll harden up and be, be uh, spreadable for our sandwich. So I will see you tomorrow. Now something really easy to do on these guys is when you're filleting one side to go through on the other side of the rib cage. So I always start a little bit shallow just to make sure that I'm on that rib cage on the right side. There you go. show you here so 
that it makes sense before I go through and do the rest. Hold on, Tipsy. But Spanish mackerel, hands down, one of my favorite fish. I mean, it's a fillet too, but right there, so that's a good example. On the other side, I went through. Hang on one second for the plane. All right, so as I was showing you here, I was on the right side of the rib cage, and then as I got down, I slipped under that rib cage and got to the wrong side so there you go a little extra there but that's okay some sashimi so now the other side I'm gonna start more towards the tail just so that I make sure I'm on the right side of that rib cage I'm actually gonna pin bone this with tweezers because I want to keep that whole fillet and we are keeping the skin on That's gonna be perfect for our sandwich. And one of the things I said I was gonna tweezer it, I'm actually gonna cut those pin bones out just to save myself a little bit of time. did that one but there are perfect sandwich fillets so just a little salt and pepper on our fillet and now something that should help if you've ever put a piece of fish in a pan and had the skin completely curl on you one of the reasons why is if you take it fresh out of the fridge. So something you should do is take it out and let it sit and let it come up in almost room temperature and you'll have less of that curling happen. But it's probably going to happen anyway. We'll just press down lightly with the spatula. So I got my pan on medium heat and also the fillets have been drying on the paper towel. And if you just gently press down, you don't have to mash them into the pan. Just gently press down, that skin will relax. But with it being up to room temp, if you notice, they're really not curling. Now these being so thin, I'm going to pretty much cook them all completely on one side. And then when they're almost cooked through, turn off the heat, flip them over, and take them off just to assure that that middle is getting cooked I'm gonna lightly press down again I see people mash their fish down just to make sure that that skin gets cooked and you just got to be gentle with it and it will relax and lay flat now also don't forget that Spanish mackerel can be eaten raw so you can do this medium rare just like you would tuna or salmon I am going to cook it all the way through, but those are pretty much ready to flip, so we're going to shut off the heat. I'm going to give those about 20 seconds tops and pull them off. So one of the reasons that I absolutely love Vietnamese cooking is because it, it has so much French influence, but yet it obviously stands alone as Vietnamese cooking does as an Asian culture. But you have things like the pate and especially the bread. 
The bread is amazing. Now here in Key West, I can't get too nice of bread, but I got I got a pretty good baguette, so we'll be okay. But to me, it is the melting pot of culinary just at its finest to where one culture influenced another culture and you end up with this food that has a combination of both cultures that stands on its own and is its, is its own unique thing that is mind-blowing. The banh mi to me captures this. So let's build our sandwich. All right, first thing, our bread. And then we have our chicken liver pate that we made that is because of all that butter is absolutely perfectly spreadable <laughs> couldn't be happier with that now we'll put on our two fillets a little bit of mayo on this side a little bit of sriracha. Cilantro. This is our pickled carrots and radish that we made last night. So the radish turned a little bit pink. Normally, like I said, you would use daikon and not uh, just a regular American radish, but take what we can get down here, okay? <laughs> and one jalapeno. We're gonna slice that super thin. <laughs> Let's sit down and eat. I, the other thing is that the banh mi is just, it's just a thing of beauty, all the colors on it. It is, to me, a perfect sandwich. Now, normally, this would have been done with sardines. But considering that Spanish mackerel was the size of a sardine, I think, I think we're doing okay. It's a perfect sandwich. It really is. The flakiness of the bread. The bread is super important. But the crispy flakiness of the bread. It's so rich because of the pate, the fish, the mayonnaise. But then the cilantro and the pickled veg just cuts right through that. And... It is an unmistakable flavor. If you've had a banh mi before, you can picture it perfectly. There's nothing that tastes like this. Well, I'm actually gonna finish this and then go back down to the Ingham today to try to do a little bit better than I did yesterday. Um, I'm gonna get there a little earlier today. Uh, and see what we come up with but maybe i'll have another spanish mackerel episode for you but thank you for coming along on this adventure if you enjoyed yourself hit like hit subscribe definitely share i've been seeing that you guys have been sharing the videos and i appreciate that so much it does so well for me um getting the videos out there and everything and the channel's growing and i have nobody to thank but you guys for that so big thank you and i'll keep the videos coming I'll see you on the next one.